Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to see about the topic of loads and its types under the unit 2 transverse loading on beams and stresses in beams from the paper Strength of Materials for Mechanical Engineers. Basically, there are three types of loads. One is a point load, second one is a uniformly distributing load, third one is uniformly varying load. Under this, the first category is point load. Point load or concentrated load. It can be otherwise known as concentrated load. When a load acts concentrated at a definite point, that is particularly on a point, then it is named as concentrated load or point load. We can see some of the best examples of point load in the below figures. So this red arrow mark will be a point load or concentrated load. And this one is an another example of this point load that is putting or hammering a nail on a wood. Second one is uniformly distributed load. A distributed load is a load which is spread on some length of the beam, which means completely on the beam or up to certain length of the beam. So the reason it is measured in intensity with the units Newton per meter. If the intensity is constant along the length, then it is named as uniformly distributed load, which means consider a load of 1000 Newton per meter is applied on the entire span of the length of beam, then it is named as uniformly distributed load. And this is also a practical example, That's, that is a truck is a having a pipe, a large diameter of pipe on its tail. Consider this as a beam, then the load or force given by this pipe will be the uniformly distributing load. And then uniformly varying load. Whenever the load distributed along the length of the beam and if the intensity is not uniform, which means throughout the span of the length the intensity may vary as you can see that in this image as well as this image. Whatever may be the support, here we are seeing only the load. So this load will be of low intensity and this end will have the high intensity. So uniformly varying load means from the point A to B, the entire length will be equally cut down and the pieces will have the difference of intensity will be the same, but the intensity on either ends will not be the same one, which means uniformly varying load. So, concentrated loads are also known as point loads, assumed to act at a point and immediately introduce an oversimplification since all practical loading system must be applied over finite area which means the load acting on the point will be in a finite position. So in order to give more examples and visualize what are the loads and how they are applied on the beams and some of the practical examples will give a clear idea than what I am saying. And so these images are given in the slides. So consider this as a beam with a point load and this beam with a uniformly distributed load. How the loads can be calculated and how the load is affecting the beam. It can be calculated by the reactions from the load given on the beam. So in order to give more idea, I had given this image with load in a separate slides. So this is a beam of span length L 
with the hinged support on one end and with the roller support on its other end with the uniformly distributed load and this one is with the uniformly varying load so the, what will the loads do on the beams so consider this as a beam a straight line when we are applying a concentrated load so the brown arrow mark will be the load what we are applying and the green arrow marks are nothing but reactions from the support so basically two things will happen when we are applying the load on the beam the first one is bending moment bending of the beam and second one is shearing of the beam so as you can see that the second part it gets sheared so these are the two, two major things that will happen when we apply some loads whatever may be the load either concentrated or UDL or UEL these two things will happen definitely so this is a beam with applied concentrated load at its center then C is nothing but compressive and T is nothing but tensile so on bending moment this will be the output image and when we have the sharing moment this will be the output so it is a point or concentrated load and so this type of sharing will happen so designing in beams in architectural structures bending moment are more important as the span increases so short span structures with heavy loads which means shear dominant the best example for this type of designing of beams is pin connecting engine parts beams in building are designed for bending and also checked for shear so how we can calculate the effects of loads the first thing we have to do is we should find all the forces which means the load which includes support reaction also and second thing make the beam into a free body cut it out and artificially support it so to find reactions using the conditions of equilibrium so internal reactions in beams so at any cut in a beam there are three possible internal reactions required for equilibrium they are normal force shear force and then bending moment so consider this as a beam with a point load or concentrated load at a certain point the point before the first support will be as a which means the length and the point after to the next support will be the b the entire length will be l and what are all the possible reactions in a beams with applied this kind of load they are normal force shear force and then bending moment so the first half we will take the first half from the previous slide so in this end what are all the three possible internal reactions normal forces n normal forces is nothing but from the given point load p normal forces is 90 degree to the load applied and then shear force is b and then bending moment this bend arrow m will be the bending moment so this will be in positive direction and so the reaction we will get on applying this point load will be p is nothing but the magnitude of load applied b by over the span of the length l and this is on right hand side so this will be the normal force this will be the shear force and this will be the bending moment so the support reaction at right hand side will be p a by l under the direction of uh, length of l minus x in previous slide we had considered this portion as x the length of the portion will be x so how we can calculate shear forces bending moments and then with the help of sign conventions 
so this will be the beam and this will be the load applied so before the point before the length of this load applied will be left hand side and this will be right hand side so the shear forces positive shear will be down arrow and then upward arrow also on the right hand side the negative shear will be the left hand side will have the upward arrow and the right hand side will have the down arrow which means the vice versa of positive shear will be the negative shear bending moments so negative bending moment will have left hand side of clockwise directions and the positive moment will have anti clockwise directions so sign conventions is nothing but the sagging moment of bending will have positive and then hogging moment will have negative so these are all the basic parameters we should have in the mind to calculate the reactions bending moment and then shear force so here is an example of cantilever beam with a point load at its end so cantilever beam is nothing but one end will be the fixed end and another one is a free end the point load is at the free end the length of the beam will be l the reaction will have negative of load applied so vertical reaction will be negative of w and the moment reaction so m r is nothing but moment reaction is equal to negative of the load applied with the length multiplied length of the beam will be multiplied so use the free body idea to isolate part of the beam add in forces required for equilibrium in order to calculate the reactions as well as shear force diagram and bending moment so first one so take section anywhere at distance so x from end so add in forces so shear force is equal to negative of the load applied and the bending moment will be the length consider this as a x and this will be the l minus x so bending moment will be minus of W X. So this will be the shear force diagram for this cantilever beam point load at its end. So first thing we had separation of free body diagram, and then the forces are added, and then finally we had find out. The shear force and then bending moment. So bending moment of this cantilever beam is minus W into X for consider this n. And when X is equal to L, the maximum length, then the bending moment will be minus W L. And when X is equal to zero, the bending moment will be zero. And so the diagram for this example cantilever. With the point load at the end will be like this. So cantilever beam with the uniformly distributed load. So whatever the beam and whatever the load, the first thing we have to do is the free body diagram, and then applying the forces, whatever the given, and then calculating the shear force followed by bending moment. Finally, we can able to draw what is the shear force diagram for the given beam with load, and then bending moment for the beam with given load. So this is an another example of the same cantilever beam with uniformly distributed load. So this brown rectangular bar will be the beam, and this will be the applied uniformly distributed load. So W per unit length. So for maximum shear force V and then bending moment B M. So M R will be minus W L by 2 and the reaction is equal to W. The load applied is nothing but W into L. So total load is capital letter W. So the vertical reaction will be on this end. 
R is equal to W and the moment reaction MR is equal to minus W L by 2. So the another example for this cantilever beam with uniformly distributed load. So for distributed shear force and bending moment for this kind of beam with uniformly distributed load. So when x is equal to L shear force will be the maximum when x is equal to 0 shear force will be 0. So x is nothing but on a particular point at a particular point. Similarly bending moment Bm is equal to W into x square by 2. So when x equal to L the bending moment will be the maximum and when x is equal to 0 the bending moment will be 0. So this gives a parabolic path. So this will be the shear force diagram and this will be the bending moment diagram. And finally shows a cantilever of length L fixed at A carrying a gradually varying load which means uniformly varying load. This beam will have a uniformly varying load and this beam will be a cantilever which means one end is fixed and another one is free end. So from 0 at the free end to W per unit length at fixed end. So fixed end will have the maximum intensity of load and B the other end free end will have the minimum intensity of the load. So this carries a parabolic curve of shear force and then the bending moment diagram will be in negative. So this can be drawn from the basic calculations what we have seen in the previous slides. So first thing we have to get the free body diagram and then add in the forces and then calculating the shear force and bending moment and finally the diagram of shear force diagram and then bending moment has drawn. So the sagging and the hagging of beams will have this positive and negative signs. So sign conventions. From the sign conventions, this positive and negative will be identified. So with this, I conclude this session. So we will see further topics in the next video. Thank you.